Have you ever wondered what could be the ideal niche for you on a small hobby farm to make some great profits? Welcome to Farming Know-How, where we cultivate wisdom about everything farming. Today, we're exploring the world of hobby farming. If you've ever dreamed of trading city chaos for the tranquility of the countryside, hobby farming might be your ticket. It's not just about the lifestyle, though. Hobby farming can also be a profitable venture. Imagine raising your own chickens for farm fresh eggs, cultivating honey from your own beehives, or perhaps growing organic vegetables that command premium prices at local markets. The key to profitability is finding the right niche, that sweet spot where your skills, interests and market demand converge. So, whether you're a seasoned farmer or a city dweller dreaming of a simpler life, hobby farming could be the answer. Stay tuned as we delve into the process of finding your perfect hobby farm niche. To kickstart your journey, it's crucial to understand your own skills and interests. And this isn't just about what you're good at, or what you like to do in your spare time, but about how these abilities and passions can be harnessed to create a successful hobby farm. Consider this, if you have a knack for gardening, it might be a good idea to start a vegetable or herb farm. Your knowledge about different plant species, their growth patterns and optimal care requirements can give you a strong foundation. On the other hand, suppose you're someone who loves animals and has experience in raising them. In that case, you could consider livestock farming, whether it's poultry, cattle, or even bees, your understanding of animal needs and behavior can be a significant asset. Or maybe you're a foodie with a passion for unique flavors. Why not try your hand at growing exotic fruits or vegetables? Or perhaps you're a woodworking enthusiast? In that case, consider a tree farm that produces timber or other valuable tree products. But it's not just about what you love or what you're good at. It's also about how you can use these skills and interests to meet a need in the market. For example, if you're a master compost maker and see a demand for organic fertilizers in your local market, that's a clear indication of where your skill could be put to the most profitable use. Also, remember that your skills and interests can evolve over time. Maybe you start with a vegetable farm because that's where your skills lie. But over time you develop an interest in beekeeping and decide to add that to your farm. That's the beauty of a hobby farm. It can grow and evolve with you. In essence, understanding your skills and interests isn't just about self-assessment. It's about aligning those skills and interests with a profitable farming niche. It's about leveraging what you love to do and what you're good at to create a farm that not only brings you joy, but also generates a healthy profit. Remember, your unique skills and passions can turn your hobby farm into a thriving business. So take some time to understand what you bring to the table and let that guide your journey into hobby farming. Now that you've identified your skills and interests, it's time for some market research. Market research is the compass that guides your venture in the right direction. It helps to understand both the local and global markets, and to identify what's in demand, what's trending and who your competition is. It's a bit like detective work, but instead of chasing criminals, you're chasing opportunities. Start by looking at your local market. What products are flying off the shelves at the farmer's markets? What do the local restaurants and stores crave for? Are there any gaps in the market that you could fill with your unique skills and interests? Next, broaden your scope and explore the global market. This might sound a bit daunting, but thanks to the internet, you have a world of information at your fingertips. Look for global trends that could be relevant to your hobby farm. For example, if there's a rising demand for organic produce globally, could you tap into this trend on a local level? Competition is another key aspect of market research. Who else is doing what you're planning to do? How are they doing it? What can you learn from them? But remember, competition isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can validate that there's a demand for what you're offering. And there's always room for a fresh perspective and a unique twist. Finally, don't forget to revisit your market research regularly. Markets are dynamic, they change and evolve. What's hot today might be lukewarm tomorrow. So, stay on top of the trends and adapt as needed. Market research can be a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, but when the pieces come together, it can provide a clear picture of where to steer your hobby farm venture. Market research can help you identify profitable opportunities that align with your skills and interests. So, roll up your sleeves, put on your detective hat, and dive into the exciting world of market research. Trust me, it's an adventure worth embarking on. With your skills, interests, and market research in hand, it's time to look at resource allocation. Resource allocation is like putting together a puzzle. You've got all these pieces, land, equipment, capital, time, 
and you need to figure out how they all fit together to create a profitable hobby farm. Let's break it down. First, consider your land. How much space do you have available for farming? What's the quality of the soil? The availability of water? These factors will determine what you can grow and how much you can produce. Next, think about the equipment you have or can afford to buy. Do you have a tractor, or will you be relying on manual labor? Do you have a greenhouse, or will you be farming outdoors? The answers to these questions will influence your choice of crops and farming methods. Capital is another crucial factor. How much money are you willing and able to invest in your hobby farm? Remember, it's not just the initial cost of setting up the farm you need to consider. There are ongoing costs such as seeds, fertilizers, and maintenance. Finally, consider your time. Farming is a time-intensive endeavor. How much time can you devote to your hobby farm each day, each week? This will affect the scale of your farming operations and the type of crops you choose to grow. Now why is resource allocation so important? Well, efficient resource allocation ensures you're not wasting any of your resources. It helps you make the most of what you have, and increases your chances of turning a profit. For example, if you have a small piece of land but a large amount of capital, you might opt for high-value crops that require expensive equipment. On the other hand, if you have a large piece of land but a small amount of capital, you might choose crops that require less equipment but more land. Resource allocation is not a one-time event. It's an ongoing process of reassessment and adjustment as you learn more about your farm and the market. So, as you venture into hobby farming remember to keep a close eye on your resources. Make sure you're using them efficiently and effectively. After all, resource allocation is key to maximizing profits and minimizing waste. You're almost there. The next step is trial and experimentation. Pull up your metaphorical sleeves because it's time to get your hands dirty. This is where the real fun begins. You're about to dive headfirst into the world of trial and experimentation, a crucial step in finding your ideal farming niche. This is the stage where you'll test out your ideas, allowing you to refine your strategies before fully investing your time, effort, and resources. Picture yourself as a scientist in a lab, but instead of test tubes and lab coats, you've got seeds, soil, and livestock. This is the part where you experiment with different crops, trying out various species that might thrive in your unique environment. Maybe you've got a knack for growing strawberries or perhaps your land is perfect for cultivating lavender. The only way to know is to try, observe, and learn. And it's not just about crops. The world of livestock offers a whole new realm of possibilities. From chickens to goats, bees to alpacas, each animal brings its own unique benefits and challenges. So why not try your hand at raising a few different types? It's all part of the experimentation process. Testing out different farming techniques is another crucial part of this stage. Maybe traditional farming methods work best for you, or perhaps you're more inclined towards hydroponics or aquaponics. Again, it's all about trying different things and finding what works best for you and your farm. Trial and experimentation isn't just about discovering what works though, it's also about identifying what doesn't work. This stage allows you to spot potential pitfalls before they become costly mistakes. It's about saving you time, money, and heartache in the long run. In the end, the process of trial and experimentation is what truly brings your farming vision to life. It's where you'll find your passion, hone your skills, and ultimately discover the most profitable niche for your hobby farm. Remember, trial and experimentation can save you from costly mistakes and help you find the most profitable niche. So, there you have it. The process of finding your ideal hobby farm niche isn't as daunting as it seems. Remember, it all starts with understanding your skills and interests. Reflect on what you love doing and what you're good at. Then, conduct some market research. Find out what's in demand, what people are looking for, and how you can provide that on your farm. Next, consider resource allocation. How can you use what you've got to produce something valuable? It's all about being creative and resourceful. And finally, don't forget about trial and experimentation. It's okay to make mistakes and learn from them. That's how you'll find your perfect niche. We hope this guide helps you on your journey to profitable hobby farming. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share with your fellow hobby farmers. Stay tuned for more farming know-how.